In this video, I'll be explaining what crypto wallets are and how to use them so that even if you're a complete beginner and have zero experience in crypto, by the end of this video, you'll understand how to use crypto wallets and how to get them set up properly. I'll also be sharing my favorite crypto wallets and how to potentially earn some free crypto by using the right wallets. Crypto wallets are how you use and interact with different apps and tokens that are on chain. And you could think of on chain sort of like the new online. It's like a different version of the internet. And on chain is how you get access to the vast majority of different crypto tokens that you can buy, as well as the different crypto apps and yield sources that you can tap into. In fact, if you wanna get into tokens really, really early, the best and easiest way to do that is to go on chain because the vast majority of different crypto tokens and projects start out on chain first. And it's not until the tokens get to a certain size and get really big that they actually get listed on sites like Coinbase, Binance, etc. And crypto wallets are your gateway to actually buying these tokens and interacting with these different apps on chain. Now the term crypto wallet is actually a little bit confusing because crypto wallets don't actually hold any crypto. All crypto tokens are stored on the blockchain. Your wallet is what holds your private keys. And your private keys are your way of indicating that you're the true owner of the tokens associated with your crypto address. An easy way to think of it is sort of like your digital signature. You can use your wallet to sign a special signature on the blockchain indicating when you want to move your funds or do things with your funds. So say you wanna swap some Ethereum for some Matic on a decentralized exchange like CowSwap. You would simply connect your wallet to CowSwap, click the swap button, sign the transaction using your wallet. This just involves you clicking a button and confirming that you want to do the transaction. And your ETH would get swapped for Matic. That's a really basic example, but it gives you an idea of how wallets and transactions on chain work. So wallets are apps that you can install on your computer or on your phone that allow you to do things on the blockchain. And my current favorite wallet is the Rabi wallet. And I use specifically the desktop version. So it's a browser extension on my computer. The Rabi wallet is the wallet I use for things like Ethereum, Arbitrum, Optimism, Base, Polygon, etc. But unfortunately, Rabi Wallet only works for EVM chains. And we're not going to get into what EVM is, but it's a certain type of blockchain. Rabi Wallet works for those blockchains, but it doesn't work for other blockchains like Solana, or it doesn't work for other blockchains like the blockchains within the Cosmos ecosystem. So when I want to go use Solana, my favorite wallet to use is the Phantom Wallet. And when I want to use chains within the Cosmos ecosystem, my favorite wallet to use is Kepler Wallet. And I've included links to some of the most popular wallets in the description of this video. Once you've downloaded your wallet, you're going to need to get it set up. Now, when you set up most wallets, it's going to give you what's called a seed phrase. And this is really, really important. If somebody gets access to your seed phrase, they can steal all of your funds. And on the other hand, if your computer dies, or say you have your wallet on your phone, your phone dies, or you lose it or whatever, the way that you're going to be able to recover your funds is by using your seed phrase. You can take that seed phrase, you can plug it into any other wallet on any other device on the planet, and you will have instant access to all of your funds. So it lets you recover your funds, but it also would let somebody else access your wallet and drain your funds. When you use a crypto wallet, you're doing what's called self-custodying your own funds, meaning there's no support or company you can call if you mess this up and you, you lose access to your wallet and you haven't written down your seed phrase. It's kind of like your own physical wallet, right? Like if you had cash in your own physical wallet and you lose that, there's no support number you can call and be like, hey, I lost my wallet. Can I get my money back? the Chase Bank or something like that. Like you can't do that. You were self custodying your own funds in your own wallet. You lost those funds. Now those funds are gone. There's no way to recover them. Except, you know, obviously with crypto, like I just mentioned, if you have the seed phrase, you can recover them. If you, if you have your seed phrase, you can plug it into any other device on any other computer on the planet and recover those funds using your seed phrase. So it's ultra, super important, which is a really cool side note. Technically, if you were to memorize those 24 words, or sometimes you do 12 word seed phrase, if you were to memorize those, you could technically carry around your entire net worth in your head. Think about like a war-torn country, right? Where like you have your money in the bank, like you can't get that money from the bank to another bank outside that country, like the bank won't allow you. Uh, you could try to withdraw the, the cash and cross the border, but the border patrol might give you a little shakedown, especially if it's a war-torn country and, and take that money from you. That's happened a lot of times in, in history where like people have tried to flee these war-torn countries, there's a lot of corruption that happens and, and they can't get their valuables. They can't take their wealth with them. There was, there's no way in, you know, historically for them to do that. But with something like crypto, you could carry it around in your head. You, you have that 24, you know, words memorized in your head across the border. They try to shake you down. They, they got nothing. You got nothing. You go across the border, you know, open up a computer, put those words in, boom, you have your entire net worth still with you. Or think about like you're going through the airport and like, uh, do you have $10,000 or more on your persons? Well, technically, if you have the, that, those words memorized, you got millions of dollars. You got billions 
billions of dollars literally sitting in your head. Nothing like this has ever existed before. It really is a crazy concept. So your seed phrase is really important. Keep it somewhere safe. And I mean, ideally, if you can, I guess, try to memorize it. Now, if you want to be extra secure, you can buy what's called a hardware wallet. These are physical USB-like devices that actually contain your private keys on a highly secured chip. And they're also devices you can disconnect from your computer. So it's like uh, you, you take that device that's got your private keys, you disconnect it from your computer, and you can put it somewhere safe so that, you know, it doesn't matter how hard somebody tries to hack your computer, there's like no way they can access that thing because it's not actually connected to your computer. Normally, when you have like a browser wallet and you don't have a hardware wallet, your private keys are technically stored on your computer. They're encrypted, like they're, they're really secure, uh, but like maybe there's some way that somebody can hack into that and, you know, break that encryption. It's very unlikely. I've never heard of somebody doing this. But just like if you're like a crazy paranoid person like me, where you're like, nah, I'm going like extra, extra paranoid level, a hardware wallet adds a pretty awesome extra layer of security to keep your funds safe. The two most popular wallets today are Ledger and Trezor. And to use a hardware wallet with something like the Rabi wallet, all you would do is you'd simply connect your hardware wallet to your Rabi wallet and use your Rabi wallet as normal. Only when you went to approve a transaction, instead of just clicking the button on your Rabi wallet, you would actually have to click buttons on your hardware wallet as well. You couldn't actually approve that transaction without your hardware wallet being connected to the computer. And just like any other wallet, a hardware wallet would have its own seed phrase. So you'd have a seed phrase that comes with that hardware wallet. If your device got broken or you lost or whatever, you could get uh, order a new device, type your seed phrase in, and you again have access to all of your funds. Once you have your wallet set up, you're going to want to send some funds to it. You can do this by simply going to your exchange, selecting send or withdraw, selecting the asset you want to withdraw, and then putting the address you want to withdraw to. You can find your address in your wallet. For Rabi, you can find it right here. And you're gonna wanna pay close attention to what blockchain that you're using here, because not all tokens can be sent to all blockchains. Again, kind of confusing, I know, but if this were easy, then there really wouldn't be any opportunity. If like this was like, you know, everyone knew how to do this stuff, it was super easy, then everyone would be doing it, and there wouldn't be this massive amount of opportunity in the space. It's the fact that it's kind of a little bit difficult for most people to do these things means that you have this surface area for opportunity because most people are too lazy to go learn how to do these things. Now, when talking about wallet addresses for networks like Optimism, Arbitrum, Polygon, Base, uh, BNB Chain, they all use the same exact uh, address type. So your address for Ethereum, is gonna be your same address for Base. It's gonna be your same address for Polygon. It's gonna be your same address for Optimism. However, those networks are still separate. <laughs> It's so confusing. I, I will make this easy to understand. Okay, let's imagine you're in Coinbase and you're going to send some funds to Ethereum. Your address ends in 7777. Okay, so like it's a long address, but let's say the ending, the last four digits were just all four sevens. You paste that address, you're going to select the network. The network's going to be Ethereum. Now, when you send those funds to that address ending in four sevens, on Ethereum, when you send that those funds over, you can use those funds on the Ethereum blockchain. But if there's an app on the Optimism blockchain, you're not gonna be able to use that app because your funds aren't on Optimism, they're on Ethereum. Okay, you understand that part. Now let's say you wanna send funds to Optimism. You're gonna also paste in that same address that ends in four sevens. It's gonna be the exact same address to send your funds to uh, Optimism. However, on the network tab, you're going to indicate not Ethereum, but instead you're going to indicate Optimism. That's the only shift you're going to have to make. It's the same address, but it's a different network. And now when you send those funds, they're going to be on the Optimism network. Okay, so now I'm going to walk you through step by step how to actually send funds to one of these networks. To send funds to one of those networks, you go to your wallet, you copy your address, you select on Coinbase or whatever exchange you're using the asset and the network you want to send to. You paste the address, then you press send and your funds should show up in your wallet. Typically with Coinbase, they're not gonna let you send an asset to a network you can't go to, so you should be good there. However, if you're new to this, I recommend starting out sending a tiny bit of funds, something you don't really, you're not like scared to lose, just so you can get the process down and don't mess anything up. And once you get the process down, you send some funds over and it works. Then you can send larger amounts, but first test it by sending a small amount first. Now, just in case this wasn't confusing enough, each network is gonna use a different gas token. Gas tokens are how you pay network fees. For Ethereum, Arbitrum, Optimism, Base, they all use the same gas token and that's ETH. These are typically just pennies on network works like Arbitrum, Optimism, Base, and they can range from anywhere from $5 to $50 to $300 on Ethereum, which is typically a much more expensive network to use. If you're just getting started out, I personally recommend not using Ethereum's Layer 1 instead of using Ethereum's Layer 2s like Arbitrum, Optimism, Base, etc. Again, they're pennies to transact on, where Ethereum's like more, if you have a ton of capital to, tra to transact with, you're using Ethereum Layer 1 because you're going to be paying $5 to $10 to $20 to $50 fees. Here's a basic rundown of different chains and the gas tokens they use. Ethereum and Ethereum layer twos like Optimism, Arbitrum, Base, etc. 
I'll use ETH for gas. Polygon uses Matic for gas, the Matic token. Solana uses Sol for gas, the, the Sol token. BNB chain uses the BNB token. And Cosmos chains use all sorts of different gas tokens. It just depends on the chain. And this is sort of one of those things you just kind of figure out along the way. Like as you're needing to go to a certain chain, you're going to look up what gas token it uses. And then you're going to have to send over that gas. You're going to send over the tokens to, you know, get started doing whatever you're going to do. And you kind of just pick these things up as you're learning. You don't really have to learn it all off the bat. You just got to learn what you need to know to do whatever things you're wanting to do. And if you mess this up, it's not like a huge deal. Like say you send funds to a chain and you don't have gas there. Like you send some funds to Polygon and you don't have any Matic on that chain. All that's going to mean is like your chains or your funds are just stuck there and you can't do anything until you send over some gas. So then you could just like buy a little bit of Matic on Coinbase. You send it over to uh the Polygon network, and now you can go do stuff, and it's not that big of a deal. Okay, now let's walk through how to use a DEX or a decentralized exchange. For this example, we're going to send over some Ethereum or some ETH to the Arbitrum network, and we're going to use Uniswap to buy a token. Specifically, we're going to buy the Pendle token. You're going to go to Uniswap. You're going to launch the app. You're going to connect your wallet. You're going to select the asset you want to sell. So that's going to be Ethereum. And then you're going to select the asset you want to buy. That's going to be Pendle. You're going to input how much you want to sell, and that's going to indicate how much you're going to be able to buy. And then you're going to click swap. Typically, you're going to have to approve the transaction first in your wallet. So you're approving the amount you can spend. So that's one transaction. And then after that, a second transaction will pop up. And this is your actual swap. So the first one is just like, hey, you have permission to spend this amount of funds. That transaction goes through. Second transaction is, okay, I have permission now. Do you want me to swap? So then you say, yes, I would like you to swap. You, you click it to sign the swap. And then once the transaction settles, the Ethereum that you wanted to sell will be gone. And the Pendle token that you wanted to buy will be in your wallet. And then you would have spent maybe a couple pennies to, uh, you know, 10 cents or more on gas fees paid out in ETH as well to do the transaction. And as mentioned earlier, again, typically all tokens start out on chain. So if you want to get them early when they're small, the easiest way to do this is to learn how to go on chain and actually buy these things early. Now, I mentioned earlier how you could possibly earn some free crypto by using certain crypto wallets. And Rabi was the wallet I was talking about when I was referencing this. If you're using Rabi wallet, you're going to earn things called points. And these points are supposed to be eventually redeemable for the Rabi token when they launch it. This is called an airdrop, and it's like an incentive mechanism to get people to use certain apps or certain things on the blockchain by promising them points up front that'll allow them to earn an airdrop token in the future. And I've personally made quite a bit of money in crypto from these airdrops. It's actually absurd the amount of money that you can make from these airdrops. In fact, over 2023 and so far over 2024, I've made combined over $100,000 just from airdrops alone. That, however, is an entire topic that would take up an entire video if I dove into it, and we'll leave that for maybe a different video. My point, though, was that you're well on your way to earning potentially some of these airdrops because you're getting on chain and you earn these airdrops by doing things on chain, including using the Rabi wallet. Now, I have a ton more to dive into regarding wallets, but really quick, I just wanted to say I filled up all slots for the Obsidian Council, my private research community, and it's once again closed to new members. You can sign up for the waitlist list in the description below if you want to be able to join next time you open it back up. Now, what do you do if you want to get access to a token that's on a different chain? Like it's it's a non EVM chain. You can't use Rabbit Wallet for it. Say it's on Solana or say it's on a Cosmos chain. How do you get access? How do you send tokens to those chains? And how do you move funds from, say, Ethereum or Optimism to those chains? Well, typically, say you have funds on Arbitrum. Say you have those funds we talked about for swapping for Pendle on Arbitrum. You're going to convert those funds into ETH or maybe a stable coin like USDC. And you're going to send those funds to your Coinbase exchange. This is the e There's other ways to do it. This is just the easiest way to do it. So you're going to send those funds from Arbitrum, Optimism, wherever to Coinbase. OK, and you're going to, again, uh, make sure you're indicating the right network and that Coinbase has uh, th that network built in and you're able to receive funds from that network. And this is another thing where you have to indicate networks because Coinbase doesn't support every network. So when you go to uh, you click the receive button on Coinbase, and it's going to ask you what network you want to receive from. So you're going to have to indicate Optimism or Arbitrum or whatever. And then uh, as long as it, it generates an address and it shows that you can do that, then you just copy that address, you paste it in your wallet, and you would send your funds from your wallet to back to Coinbase. From there, you take your ETH and you'd sell it for Solana's token Sol. And then you'd send that Sol to your Solana address. So you'd install the Phantom Wallet, you get a Solana address. These are these look way different than the Ethereum addresses. Ethereum addresses typically start in 0x. Solana addresses are much different. They, they look way different. You copy your Solana address from your Phantom Wallet, you'd paste it over on Coinbase, and you'd send that soul to that Solana address. And then once the soul shows up in your Solana address, you'd swap that soul for whatever token you wanted to buy on Solana. Now, really quick, let's 
let's do a walkthrough of the Rabi wallet. First thing is on the top right, you can click the wallet icon to open up a menu with a ton of different options. This is how you import seed phrase, connect a hardware wallet, and just a ton more things. Second, at the top, you'll see your wallet name and a snippet of your address. If you click this, it's gonna load up all your different addresses. From here, you can create a new seed phrase to create a new address or load new wallet addresses from your hardware wallet. Next to your address is a button that allows you to easily copy your wallet address. Under that, if you click on the blue area, it'll load up all your tokens across all EVM compatible chains. It'll even show you tokens you have staked or yield farming. Below that is nine different options. The first one is swap, and this allows you to swap assets within Rabi Wallet. This is actually super easy and useful and one of the best swap experiences out there. In fact, I pretty much only use Rabi Swap unless I'm on Ethereum, then I'll use CalSwap. But outside of CalSwap on Ethereum, just because that is a next level DEX experience, if I'm gonna swap anything anywhere else, I'm gonna use <laughs> Rabi's built-in swap. And the built-in swap is just a DEX aggregator of aggregators. So it's gonna use a bunch of other aggregators like One Inch, Kuiper, et cetera, to find you literally the best price on the planet. Think of it like Kayak, uh, but for swapping crypto. Next to that is Send, which allows you to send your crypto to another address. Receive, which I've literally never used this button in my life, uh, but I guess it allows you to generate a QR code to receive crypto. NFT allows you to see your NFTs. Transactions is just an overview of all your transactions on that address, so everything you've done on that address. Gas top up is actually crazy useful. It allows you to top up gas on another chain using tokens from a chain you already have funds on. So I mentioned earlier, you might not have funds on Arbitrum and you might have sent some funds there, uh, but let's say you have funds on you know, a base or whatever. You could use some of your base funds to top up some gas on Arbitrum. It's super cool. Approvals allows you to revoke approvals. This is an advanced feature you probably won't use getting started. So I'm not gonna really dive into it right now. Rabby points is where you see the points you earn from using Rabby Wallet. And the more button just has a ton of other features and options. Under that, you'll see the price of ETH and the current gas price. Usually if it's under 20 GUE, that means the gas is really cheap. Anywhere between 20 and 50 is kind of normal. Anywhere over 50 is kind of expensive and over 100 is like crazy expensive. Finally, at the far right bottom, you have an option to ban MetaMask mask if you have you know, MetaMask already installed in your computers. This is really useful because a lot of the different dApps out there don't actually have a Rabi option for connecting a wallet. They only have a MetaMask option. So uh, if you have Rabi installed and you have MetaMask banned uh, by clicking this button, when you click that MetaMask option on that app, it's just gonna pull up your Rabi wallet instead of MetaMask. If you're interested, I have a weekly newsletter that I put out. There's a link in the description of this video where anytime I put out content, you, you get an email saying, hey, I." This new video came out. I do a lot of podcasts and things where you can learn about crypto. It's really useful. I, I update a little bit on some of the current events happening in crypto. Sometimes I have like little airdrop claims where you could be like, uh, you know, this airdrop to claim this week, this airdrop to claim this week. It's useful for the, the right people. If that's something interesting to you, you can go to the description of this video. You can click on that, sign up for that. As always, you just need to be really safe and paranoid when you're doing these things. Always triple check everything and make sure you understand it. It can be very complicated. And if you don't know what you're doing and you mess up, like you could lose a lot of money. So make sure you really understand these things. It's well worth it. You just have to be a little bit paranoid and, and just really extra cautious. As always, none of this was investment advice. If this video is helpful, make sure to hit that like button. If you have any questions, uh, let me know in the comments below. I'll try to answer any questions you guys have. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the little bell next to it to be notified each time I release a video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.